Bay Area Discs 2015 Youth Ultimate Coaching Conference. Um, I fell into coaching uh, in 1997, so a long time ago. Um, I got injured and started coaching college, and then I've coached club, and I've coached uh, the national team. So I've coached at many different levels. Uh, and I started coaching um, middle school in 2008. And uh, I thought I knew ultimate pretty well, and then I started coaching middle schoolers. I'm a middle school teacher, so I knew middle schoolers really well. And it was very humbling. Okay? And from, from my experiences doing that, I kind of developed a, a philosophy that I try to follow, and it's helped me out a lot. So what I'm going to do is... Um, we don't have a lot of time, so what I'm going to try to do, is, and generally in this group, there's lots of questions, so I want to try to make sure that we get an opportunity to answer the questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the philosophy. That'll take about five minutes. I'm going to talk at you because coaches love doing that in this terrible coaching. But I'm going to kind of go through the philosophy, and then um, if you have some questions, I'll, I'll try to address them and maybe run a drill and kind of show you what I'm talking about in terms of the answer. Um, just real quick, how many people here coach elementary school? And we got a couple people in middle school, a couple and in high school. Okay, and some people just showed up because they, they like Ultimate yeah. too. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, this is my philosophy of coaching, middle school. And it's actually similar to other ways. It's just kind of slightly prioritized differently. So um, when I'm thinking about middle school, is the first thing I think about is actually uh, coaching team culture. You know, they often say, like, what? sports reveal character they don't develop it and then diana talked about it something about character right like i think it's it's actually learned cultured like character like how to be on a team you know middle schoolers are all they come they're all just about themselves right and then you get 27 of them together and they stand in the circle and all they care about the, is themselves and then you try to play a sport together you know it's pretty difficult so teaching how to be a team is really important uh one very quick example is uh, the first time I went out, I said, oh, yeah, go run a lap. And they started running a lap. And the cross-country runners ran as quickly as possible. There's some people in the between. And then there was a guy at the behind just kind of looking at squirrels, right? And I was looked at there. I was like, we don't look like a team. We look like a PE class, right? And it happened at that point, a lacrosse team actually ran by. And I was like, well, look at them. That looks like a team. So something that's really basic, you know? And I was thinking, okay, let's run the drill. Let's run that. Let's warm up. And then we can go and play some ultimate. And what I found was they can't even run a lap. And you think that was like, that's common sense, right? You always hear like, oh, what were you thinking? And uh, middle schoolers, they aren't thinking. They haven't developed all that part that makes a thing. So it has to be taught. So I, the, what I did was first, I took my fastest runner and my slowest runner. I put them too. I was like, you guys are leading and you have to make sure the whole group stays together. There's no gap. If there's a gap, we're going to do it again. So they ran together and it went, went together. Okay, another thing I do if I don't have that problem is I'll split my group in half. I'll have uh, Rusty over there. He, you're going to take this group. You're going to go counterclockwise. Uh, Jake, you're going to take this and go clockwise. And when you meet in the middle, I want you guys to high five. Okay, so just building the virtue of being together and acknowledging your teammates. It seems really simple, but it's a big thing. Uh, I think Dean Smith in basketball, you know how when people make a basket, they point at the assist. I believe it was Dean Smith who just passed away who actually instituted that. Right? And you see that everywhere. NBA players are always like, oh, I just dunked it, and then I point to Cliff because he gave me the assist. That's a learned behavior. Okay? So if you start thinking about that for your team and creating those things, like when you, when you score, if you do a point or you have something else you do, you can build that into your team culture because now it's highlighting that it's not just me. It's me and Michelle and all these other people that are on the same team. Okay? So that's a big part of team culture. Fun. Uh, we lose sight of this a lot of the time. Believe it or not, we go over there and you, you feel yourself getting really frustrated and angry. And it's like, what are you doing? Okay, I live right across from Oakland Technical High School where Marshawn Lynch went to high school. Um, you know, big, big uh, football program. There's a lot of Pop Warner there. And I go over there and there is just no joy. There's nine and 10 year olds, right? They're really cute. They've got these big pads. And there's a big coach, usually three of them. Some of them are sitting still, rah, 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 10 minutes of just yelling, 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 okay? That's what mainstream sports are like. You as a happy ultimate player might not do that, but you're going to find yourself oftentimes just like in this mode of like being so frustrated and understanding that, you know, fun is really important. Um, you know, I coached uh, one of the national teams at the World Games a couple of years ago. So, you know, these are the top six women's players in the country, top six men's and players in the country. And if you talk to them, right, these are the people who have devoted all of this time and money to be the best at what they do, okay? 
And if you ask them, would you rather go to potlatch or to this US Open thing, they would say, I wish I was a potlatch, right? <laughs> fun is why we play the sport, and so we need to make sure that the fun is still in the sport. And the final thing is ultimate, okay? This happens to be, yeah, we're coaching ultimate. But notice on this scheme of things, that ultimate is last. And understand that these kind of, you know, fun can be, fun doesn't mean like we just come out and like, oh, let's just have fun. Fun is skill development, is having structure, is learning things, okay, that's important. And so, you know, the ultimate can fall into this, the team culture can fall into this, okay? Um, notice I didn't put winning on here. Okay, my goal as an ultimate coach is actually uh, not to win. Um, I do a lot of things that actually make winning hard. Uh, I sub absolutely evenly. I don't talk about handlers and cutters that much. There's been some years where I actually haven't talked about it. Okay, we run a vertical stack, but I don't like the hierarchy of, oh, I'm the best player on my team, I'm gonna pick it up every single time. Right, my eighth grader, like who should, so I don't even talk about that, and I don't run a dump. Okay, so, um, and those are to a detriment of probably winning oftentimes, okay, but it's great for learning ultimate, it's great for creating fun and team culture in terms of that, and then when they get to high school, they're gonna keep on playing and then they can go ahead and get concerned with winning with the, with the coach over there, okay? But with me, that's not my goal. So I'm saying that's just for middle school. Once they're in high school, then you start, you start talking to them about handler cutting? Yeah, yeah, definitely, and I, I, you can do that as a middle school, but I'm saying me to, uh, just, to we yeah, what I personally knew. Saying Fury doesn't yeah. run a dump set. <laughs> <laughs> Never talked about handlers. <laughs> when you get to Fury, this starts to move over here. Fun really goes into winning, right? Like, so, you know, depending on what your team is, like these get, we do all of these things, but they get reprioritized, okay? I think it's important to realize that. All right. Um, let's see, are there any burning, just the ultimate, like I have this problem all the time with my middle schoolers or high schoolers and you want something answered? Well, that's yeah. a problem. Well, you, thank goodness, because they are crazy. Did you know that they don't die? You know how they don't diagnose mental illness so you get older? Because kids, all of those impulse control and all those things, you know, which are, are in, you know, are clinically insane. They are, they do that. So they're just crazy. They're just crazy little people and they're awesome. Okay. Um, let me show you. Um, oh, this is actually the, the Jeremy was talking about keep away. All right. So come over to this big circle here. Um, actually, let's take away that box first. So I'm gonna, um, so one part about having fun, uh, the first thing is I think where you're going, you haven't been at Val Station yet. Um, a lot of times how we warm up isn't fun. Uh, we warm up like club teams and club teams aren't even having fun doing it, okay? So warming up your body is really important, okay? Doing plyos, some sort of plyos where you're warming every part of your body is good, okay? Most kids when they come out and do plyos, they look like this. Right, you're like, oh, do a deep knee bend. They're like this, right? They're not actually doing the thing, okay? So if you're having them do the thing, have them do it right. So understand what they're trying to do. But a lot of times, what do we want them to do? We want them to get warm, okay? So you know what middle schoolers love doing is playing tag. They love banana tag. It's a stupid game. I don't like that game at all. Banana tag, does anyone know what banana tag is? Do you know what banana tag is? Have you ever played it? Yeah, does anyone here know what banana tag is? Okay. So basically you're in the line and you're kind of partnered up. If, if you try, everyone's it. If you try to tag each other at the same time and you do it, you got a Rosham. Whoever loses a Rosham has to sit down, okay? So let's say Rusty sits down and he just got to wait there. But if Jeremy gets tagged, then Rusty can stand up, okay? So, so basically you can never win this game, right? And it just goes on and on forever. But you know what happens during banana tag? The person who sits down there and doesn't want to run is running around the whole time, okay? So that's a great way. Do your plyos, but also warm up, have fun. That's a fun way to warm up. Club teams would probably like to play some sort of banana tag to warm up. The other thing I do is something called Monarch. Um, I usually do it, uh, my field is already set up. It's in, uh, in the end zone. People play Monarch before? Yeah, so, okay. So Monarch would work as I'm it. You guys are all, all around. And what I try to do is, I, this is dangerous. You can get um, soft Frisbees, but I actually do this with middle schools. And I throw it at Matt, he's now it. Now he and I now can, run around and we're gonna run give goes and we're gonna to try to tag Nick. So now Nick is with us and everyone here is running around trying to get away. Once we get four people, I add another disc in, okay? The person who gets hit last, they're now the monarch, they're it for the next game, okay? You can fit three of those games into probably about six minutes. You get them moving and warm and they're ready to go on to actually listen to you, okay? Another thing is they come out of school, if you're doing after school and they've just been sitting, like we've been today inside all day, they don't want to actually listen. Play this game, you're warm, 
You, you can then do a couple of your other plyos and then you're ready to go, okay? So that's one way to be fun. Um, the other thing about having fun is creating an atmosphere where it's great to make mistakes, okay? Um, when I have them throw, we often like to line people up and throw. It's really easy for a coach to watch, walk down the line, see what's going wrong. If I'm throwing with Michelle and we're in a long line and I do this, and then I gotta walk across the whole line of people, right? <laughs> it's so obvious I just made a mistake. So it's harder as a coach, spread them out. And you know, when I started, I was like, just make it fly. I don't care whether it hits it, make it fly. This is great. Did it fly? Yeah, that's great. Did this fly, right? If I'm trying to throw on Michelle, does this fly? Yeah, you know what? All of these things are what ultimate players are gonna be using, right? That is a blade. That was a blade. The, the players you watch on YouTube, do they throw blades? That's awesome, okay? So make it fly, make it fly. Then we start talking about throwing it um, flat, okay? Okay, that's great, you want, it, you want to try to flatten out and you can try to flatten out. But I don't talk about, oh no, that's not right, you've got to make it this way, just make it fly, okay? Um, the other thing is I want to try to emphasize good mistakes. So this drill is going to be a drill that's helpful for scoring some points, but it's also going, I'm going to explain to you how you talk about good mistakes. So um, as I said, I don't really care about winning. I do would like my team to score some points, okay? And so if we're, Okay, let's get four people to line up. Um, just on, let's say this is an end zone line. So we got Rusty, we got Matt, Jeremy, one more person. Okay, so they're on the end zone line. So this is with regard to building a pull play. Now my pull play is not these four people are my best players. The four people that happen to be standing in the right position. The three other people here are gonna stay out of the way. Okay, in the drill, I would have a line behind here, line behind Jeremy, line behind Jude, and line behind Rusty, okay? And then I have a stationary thrower. If it's all beginners, I'll be over here. If I've got an eighth grader who's pretty good, I'll, start, I'll have the eighth grader be over here for five or six throws and then rotate them in, okay? So the way this drill is gonna work and then I'll talk about making good mistakes and then you'll also see why this is helpful to maybe score some points, okay? So um, Matt, when I say disc in, you're gonna try to run to this spot. We're basically gonna create a flood sack, okay? So you're gonna try to run to this spot. You're gonna plant off your left foot, turn, plant off your right foot, turn over your left shoulder and you're gonna get to this from me. Jeremy, you gotta run further, so you gotta run even faster to get up here. Jude's gotta get up here, and Rusty, you got the furthest distance right over here, okay? So, Matt, I'm gonna need you to jog a little bit because Rusty, he's gotta get all the way over there. Rusty is really fast, but it's a long distance, okay? So, here goes the drill. Yes, and we're gonna be throwing righty, righty backhands, okay? So, disc is in, we're all flooding. You plant off your right foot, turn over your left shoulder. I throw a backhand here, Jeremy plants, very nice, and then Jude, you're planting, and then Rusty's the last. Boom, and look, we got all the way down the field. That was excellent. Okay, so this is a fun warm-up drill. You kind of get flow. It also will build into your pull play. What the pull play will be is when we receive the pull, I'm going to pick up. Matt, you're going to be the next one. Jeremy, <laughs> Jude, Rusty, you're our best five players. Okay, the next time it goes on, that's all I do is I just go down the thing. Why I do that is because I know my team can probably get it down there. We're probably going to turn it over, okay? but we're that much closer, we're gonna get it back because it's middle school ultimate and we throw two in a row and we're gonna get it in. We can't throw seven in a row, okay? So while I might be not, I still want my team to be successful. So this is a great way to teach a cool drill that you can warm up with, um, but also bring in a pull play that's gonna get the disc not down the street. So let's get the same people over here and let's talk about a good mistake. So with most drills, I try to illustrate a good mistake. So I'll go through this a couple times and what you're gonna notice is that the disc hits the ground a lot, okay? So. Um, and I'm just gonna use Matt right here. So I'm gonna show you two things. Okay, Matt, go ahead and cut. I'm gonna do over here, I'm gonna let it fly. Now, did it go to Matt? No. Nope. But I'm gonna tell you something. That was a great mistake that I just made. Do you know why that was a great mistake? Is because if Matt over here, he's from Australia, you know that? Did you hear his accent? From Australia. If he was not Matt from Australia, but Superman, and he had a jet pack, he would have a chance of getting that. So that was a great mistake. Let me show you a terrible mistake. Okay, go ahead, let's do it again, Matt. Here we go, I'm gonna let it fly. All right, do you see that mistake over there? Not so good, Jetpack, Superman, couldn't get it, right? So, in this drill, what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to make good mistakes, okay? When that happens, Michelle, you're next in line, you're next in line, I want you to go ahead, and I want you to say, way to make it fly. Wait, okay. okay, every time there's a mistake, we're gonna way to make it fly. Okay, okay. thank you. So, you guys, <laughs> so do you guys see what, Obviously, there's always mistakes. I think you need feedback, right? So the feedback is being actually catching it. But you also want people to stay with the process and not get discouraged and get their head. So knowing what the bad mistake is and then building in actually 
um, venues for people to speak. Because usually what would happen if we did together, like, you turn it over and Jeremy's like, oh man, I don't want to do it again. And then they get in the line, they try not to be with that person anymore, right? You see this all the time, like, oh, even adults do that. So you want to bring into it where that's, they're getting out of that and they're understanding, you know, when we say good bid, all those things that you, you've heard other people say, you're saying someone actually messed up, right? Oh, nice bid. Or they say unlucky, right? But you're respecting that they were uh, doing the right thing and it wasn't executed correctly, right? And that's what we're trying to build in. So into your drills, building in the t right type of talk. Mm -hmm. Yes? So what kind of feedback do you give them that if they throw it behind them like that? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, that's the bad mistake. Yeah, so the bad mistake. I was like, I was like, way to make it fly. Let's make it fly in right. with, the, with, the, with the good mistake. Uh -huh. or, or I'll actually give real information. It's like, oh, you just need to throw a little bit sooner. Right? So that, that's real simple. But it doesn't get into this whole thing. It's like, yeah, you only clap it when, when they're actually catching it. Because you might have a team that doesn't actually complete that many passes. <laughs> then where's the feedback and where's the sort of talk? OK. Um, more, any questions? I'll show, I can show you another drill. Or? Okay. another drill. OK. Uh, this is how I teach vert stack. Can I have the same people? All right, Matt, you have the disk. Are we, we're all right-handed, right? OK, so uh, this would be an end zone. And so what I would do here is, um, this is just kind of the waterfall drill. So Rusty, you're going to make an easy out cut. And then you're going to uh, cut in. You're going to throw it back into him. And so the goal of this thing is to throw as many passes as possible. And then you're going to go ahead and clear out. We're just going in. So this teaches two concepts of basically cutting from the back of the stack and the stack moving. Okay? And one thing that they did is I want even more passes. So what I say is like what we're trying to do is throw as many passes as possible before we get to the end zone. And if you have a kind of normal size field, you usually get through seven players. Okay? So that, that would be a drill. Okay, so let's line that up again. So talking about team culture, one thing is important in terms of being a supporter team is you actually have to know their name. And believe it or not, kids don't know each other's name. You, you wouldn't believe, I have a class, you know, I'm a middle school teacher, and I have a class of uh, 30 kids. We've been meeting for half a year. We work really closely together. I say everyone's name all the time. And uh, uh, we were cooking something, and somebody cut his finger. And some guy goes like, ah, someone cut the finger. And I was like, who is it? And he was like, uh, uh, the guy with the hat. I was like, there's like six guys with the hat. And then it was like, the guy with the locks. So I was like, okay, all right, I know who it is, right? Like, don't know their name, okay? so. Um, one thing I do right in the beginning is this. So we're all going to need each other. Matt, you need to know Jude's name. Uh, and then Jude, you need to know the person in front of you. And then you got to know the person in front of you. So during this drill, we got to talk it out. Okay, so you always got to uh, talk, uh, say the name of the person you're throwing to. All right, here we go. Try to throw as many passes as possible. Jude, Jude. Nice. Nice. I like those voices. Excellent. All right. Give them a hand. Okay, so yeah, way, way to let it fly. Okay, so that's a really simple thing to incorporate the team culture, believe it or not, knowing someone's name is really important. And then from there, you can start building other things like what you want them to say. Um, I model it a lot, you know, like I'll be saying certain things and then I'll actually make that the people waiting. All right, during this time, I want you to, every time someone does this, I want you to say this. Okay, it seems really scripted, but it's really informed. Oh, you want to do that again? <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and then the other thing that I often do with this is, uh, so the way I would run this drill is everyone would be lined up like this, and we would send groups of four, five, seven, depending how big a field that you have. Okay. Um, competition is fun. Okay. Sometimes sending your teammates against each other, especially at this level, uh, they don't know how to have competition and still be supportive teammates. So my first competition will be, I will say, if you can complete six passes in a row, you are done with this drill. OK, so let's say they go ahead and they do this. And usually, OK, let's say you did it. Usually they come off. They're really happy about themselves. And they go start drinking water. They stop paying attention. They don't really care about what's going on here. Meanwhile, uh, Darius's team keeps on messing up, right? And they're just like, oh, God, I can't believe it. So what I do is I set up that competition. When you're done, that's awesome. But you are first in line, and you're going to be cheering them on. OK, so it creates competition. They come. I high five them. I'm like, awesome. You guys are great. You were perfect over there. Down over there. Let's cheer it out for Darius and, and the people that are finishing. OK, the other thing that I will often do to build in some of the leadership is they'll do the drill once and I'll say, come back in. So as they're walking back in, I was like, that was great. 
can you guys just discuss one thing you did really well, one thing you want to do different on the second rep? Okay, they go over there, they go back in there. So I'm putting some stuff on them where they're actually talking to each other. Okay, hopefully through this drill they know their name. And then once they've actually been successful, now they're cheering on their other teammates. When they finally get it, or when I decide to cut it off, it's like, all right, go out, high five your teammates, bring it back in, let's go on to the next thing. Okay, all right, thank you, you guys. Um, you're really good at the stack, that's fan fantastic. Um, we're actually out of time, but uh, let me, they're not done yet, so are there other questions? What do you do, uh, um, so our middle school is most, is all co-ed. Mm -hmm. um, what, what are you doing to integrate the girls and boys playing together? Do you have specific things, specific drills? Yes. Or? Uh, remember how we divided up in the auditorium? How did that work? Yeah, they're like, hey, we have three girls and come out and some people. Okay, if you did that with middle schoolers, all the friends would go together. Uh, possibly the girls would all go together and then you would have all these unbalanced. So don't leave it up to chance. You can number off. You can do other things. You, if you're really, you can actually keep track of which groups you had together and be really conscious of that. So with all of those things, I don't leave that up to chance. When we go and like, hey, go warm up, go throw with a partner. Um, you know how they do like pick someone you have a note you don't know before or I'll have them start out and then I'll switch over. So be really conscious of that because that's not the natural tendency and then you get that, that aspect. How about like in scrimmages or gameplay? Do you have play, like do you have ISO plays for girls or anything like that? Because it's just sometimes you, it's really hard to. The, the lucky thing, yes, we, we do that. Um, and so, you know, there's ways to, um, I mean, I, in my experience at the middle school level, because of development, oftentimes there, you have girls that are more faster and actually stronger than a lot of boys. When you get to high school, that, that's a little bit less. Um, but you, yeah, you definitely have to be conscious of that, even when you're picking your teams, how, how you do that. Um, I'll put the sixth graders, seventh graders, go ahead, line up with the girls over there. I'll count them off, so make sure they're on each group. Grant? Uh, any particular strategies for the player that's really just being a goofball and distracting the team? Uh, what type of behavior, like, what, like, in what way are they distracting the team? Like, when we're talking in general, or? Yeah, they're just goofing off in the drills and distracting the rest of the players. And what have you done? <laughs> um, if it gets really bad, I might talk to them directly. I might eventually ask them to do a lap. Mm -hmm. Okay. People, other people have experience with or with, with someone they're having trouble with. I know. I've got. I've got one player. That, I mean, he always finds the right time to make the right joke, and not 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 that it's a bad joke or anything. It's just. It gets everybody laughing just because it's he has a, a pun that he just adds, and so there's sometimes where I would stop everything and then we would all pay attention to him and it's like, okay, do you have something to say? Like, go ahead and finish your joke, and then I would let him get that out, and then it's like, okay, you've gotten that out. Now we're back to what I'm doing. Right. Okay, that's good. Uh, let me take one more and then I'll. Do you have a? You what do you stand do? Stand right by him. It's a lot harder for them to goof off if they're standing right next to you, like they're in the front of the class, even if it's a circle. So I think in charge of one of the things yeah. to think about is your goal is to actually have the attention of everyone, okay? If I suddenly engage Rand, that might not be my goal. I mean, that I might not reach my goal. So what, what Jeremy says is even when that's happening, when I'm talking, I might just go ahead and stand over here and that's fine, right? Like, so that might actually, the proximity, I haven't actually stopped anything that I'm saying, right? And I, I hear Matt talking over here and I don't even engage with him, but I'm just like, my, all my on contact is over here, but I'm gonna walk over here, right? So that's one technique. Now, that doesn't work with everyone, right? So I love what you just said. Like, if my goal is to get everyone and it takes seven seconds for me, that was really funny. Can you tell the whole group? And you can't do it like you don't actually think it's funny, right? Like, if you're just trying to put them on the spot, that's what teachers always do, right? Uh, Cliff is talking. Cliff, what did I just say? Okay, now you're in this thing where you're just like, all right, we're going to go at it and we're going to do this. It's going to take like 35 seconds and people are not going to pay attention. So if it's really funny, I love that. Just like, that was really funny. To say that again. Boom, boom, boom. Then use that. That's part of your team culture. That's hilarious. When something, when someone makes a mistake, that's funny. We're gonna say that word, right? So you can just kind of build that in, and that's now validated. Rand just wants attention, and I've just built that in where it's good. And he's like, oh, cool. So now my my little phrase is gonna be part of our team culture. We can do that. If it's really serious, then I'll just like look over there. I need you to stop right now. If he doesn't, I'll continue over here, and then I'll, I'll ignore it, and I'll continue over here, and then I'll talk to him. Uh, when, when we're transitioning to something else. Okay. 
Um, another question? And then I'm going to rotate you guys. I was going to say something uh, yeah. Michelle said was get them to do something, give them a, give them a role, and that once again gives them the attention. Often that's what they're looking for. Um, but also you you know they're like oh wait he's yeah he's he's getting me to do something important or yeah. whatever, and so give them a role where they're they're engaged all the time and focused. Right. I have a. a there, there was a kid named Tony who always would never pay attention during the beginning. And so I made him <laughs> set up the field. But he, it was like really, so Tony, Tony, that's great. Can you help me set up the field? That's great. Tony's gone. He's setting up the field. He's doing it really poorly, right? Um, but it's fine. I gave all the instructions. When he comes back, I was like, thank you so much, Tony. What we're doing right now is this. Boom, he's in. So he never got into that cycle of doing that. So that's a great idea. You know, like as you start to know your, know your team, like I purposely leave something somewhere. Like I'll leave my clipboard over by that fence. We're over here. It's like, Michelle, I left my stuff over there. Can you just run over there real quick? If a teacher's doing that to you, that might mean something. <laughs> Give me that special response. But you know, it's a really useful thing. And you know what? Remember, our goal is not we don't want to punish. We just want them back engaged and feeling part of the team and feeling useful, right? Like that's what our goal is. So doing those type of things, you're getting to to your goal, and you don't need to get into that thing of like you know.